In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Ephesians. We're going to take a little break in our look into uh, the book of Daniel just because, if nothing else, uh, it is Memorial Day. And because it is Memorial Day, I thought that it was important that we do something a little special to remember those that have given everything that they had. So since it's Memorial Day, I thought it was only appropriate. We take a second to talk about sacrifice, real sacrifice, based on love and when you know that you're not going to get anything in return, or at least you're very unlikely to. Let's talk about that kind of sacrifice, because in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 2, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Now it's true that none of us even have the ability or the capacity to give the way Christ gave. To give in the way that he did because he left a throne in glory and intentionally gave himself up to be killed for the lives of others. There is no greater sacrifice than that. No human can sacrifice that way. We just don't have that ability because we don't have that option. Christ did. But what I want to draw your attention to is the first part of verse 1. You see, we're supposed to be imitators of God. In other words, as his children, as people with a spark of that divine in us that are trying to follow in that image of our God and Creator, we need to be the kind of people that look up and try to do what God does. And knowing that God is the kind of God that sends his own son to die on a cross to have us forgiven of our sins, and that God is also the son that came to redeem us of those sins and willing to give his own life to die for us, then to be an imitator of God is to be a person that has sacrificial love. And certainly, soldiers on the battlefield that are willing to risk and in the cases that we're talking about with Memorial Day, give their own lives, that would be a sacrificial love at least similar to the sacrificial love that God has, but it's something that we're all called to do. Not all of us can fight. Not all of us have the ability or the knowledge or the skill or whatever to go out on a battlefield and defend our country and to defend other people in that way. But regardless of what we do, regardless of what our calling is, we are all called to be imitators of God, to do things that we think that God would do, to try to conform our will and our personality to be obedient to him, to be more like him, to be more Christ-like. That is a call that reaches to every person, not just soldiers, not just people that are willing to literally give their physical lives, because we are all called to give our lives to God. Not to just die for Him, but to also live for Him. And when he's talking about the sacrificial love to be literal death, literal dying in the physical sense, I think that there's something to be said for that because obviously not everybody has to make that choice and thank God for that. But I think anybody that is wanting to call themselves a follower of Christ has to at least be willing to do that. We've seen it in the martyrs, all throughout the biblical narrative, that God expects those who follow him to be able to give their own lives for his cause. Not all of us are called to do that, but all of us are expected to. And in a lot of ways, that's not too dissimilar from a soldier. Not every soldier dies in battle. 
Not every single one does have to give that ultimate sacrifice. But every single one is expected to. And if we are going to be soldiers in God's army, and if we are going to be imitators of our Heavenly Father the way that Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 describes, then we are going to be imitators of God in the sense that we would be willing to give that ultimate sacrifice. And you'll notice that in the latter part of that verse, what Paul is talking about is walking in love, as Christ also did, and then gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice. Which means that this is exactly what he's talking about. That that kind of sacrificial love that Christ walked in love all of his life and then eventually gave that ultimate sacrifice in behalf of God, that's what imitating Christ looks like. That's what imitating God is supposed to be. Having that sacrificial love that we live for one another, that we give of ourselves every single day, and that if we ever have to make that sacrifice, we're willing to. We count it but loss. You know, I've thought about this a lot. And if we're called to be imitators of God, I don't think all of us have to literally give our lives. But I do think based on this scripture, based on this text, that that willingness is not only an important part of it, but that we are called to sacrifice in some way or we're not imitating him at all. So my question is, and I want this to stick with you, and I want you to really mull this over because I know that I have for a while and I still don't have a perfect answer. What are you sacrificing? Think about that. Because if you're living a life where you can't honestly say, I am sacrificing X for the cause of Christ, I don't think you're imitating God. And I'm not saying that to convict people. I got to be honest, there's times where I don't really think I'm sacrificing anything. Where I question, am I really giving up things for God? Am I really inconveniencing myself? Am I really putting what I want on hold to do what God wants me to do? Because there's a lot of times where I don't think I am. And I just want you to remember that. That if you, and, and I'm preaching to myself here, that if you are not doing something, that you are giving something up, something that you want, something that you would rather have, but you're willing to forego for the cause of Christ, are you really being an imitator of God? Can you really call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ if you are not doing that every single day of your life? Because I don't know that you can. I don't know that you can call yourself a Christian if that's the case. And that's the reason that, frankly, sometimes I'm scared that I don't have a good answer for that question. It's something that we need to work towards every single day. If we want to really walk in love the way that Paul is talking about here, it's something that we need to consider and we need to be constantly aware of. So as we spend this important day of Memorial Day remembering the sacrifices that others have made, let's also remember to ask ourselves as Christians and as followers of our Lord and Savior, what are we sacrificing for what we believe in? Stay the course, friends. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.